Hey guys, so last week something weird happened to me. I invited my friend Jimmy to play some Xbox with me and he kind of rocked up dressed up like the Imperator from Star Wars. You look ridiculous. Ridiculous? I don't think so. It's giving me superpowers. You, you whatever. <laughs> of course I brushed him off because it kind of seemed silly, but then when I beat him in the game as per usual, his reasons kind of started to make sense. Take that! Enjoy your victory! <laughs> in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create great looking lightning effects inside of Adobe After Effects, whether you want to grill your friends like a chicken sandwich or for some other purposes. This is a pretty basic tutorial, I'm just going to assume that you've opened up After Effects before, you know how to create a composition and maybe set some keyframes, but even if you haven't, don't worry, you'll probably pick it up along the way anyways. So let's jump right into After Effects and start creating some cool lightning effects. Here's the footage of Jimmy pretending to electrocute me Imperator style. Obviously, his control of the force isn't yet strong enough, so there is no actual lightning going on, but for that we can use After Effects to help him along. First create a new solid. The easiest way to do this is to right click into your layers window and select new solid. I will call my layer lightning. The color doesn't really matter, just click ok. Now go over to the effects and presets panel and search for the advanced lightning effect. To apply this effect to your solid, make sure the solid layer is selected and then double click on the advanced lightning effect. You should now see a lightning strike down in the middle of your preview window. Since we want the lightning to come out of Jimmy's hands and strike towards my body, we first need to change the lightning type to strike. This will cause the effect to be generated from the origin to the direction marker. You can drag these markers around directly in your preview window to have your lightning start and end wherever you want. I will make it come out of Jimmy's hands and hit me in the chest. Note that by default, the lightning does not animate when you scrub through your footage. It will only change when you move the origin and direction markers around. But since Jimmy's hands stay fairly stable towards the end of the footage, I want my lightning to animate continuously. For this we will use a super simple expression. Click on the stopwatch icon next to the conductivity state property while holding down the ALT key on your keyboard. A small text field will open up in your timeline window. In this field simply type time and then click anywhere outside of the text editor. This expression will update the conductivity state property every frame to match the current time value of your composition. Now if we scrub through the composition, the lightning will animate nicely even if we don't change the origin or direction markers. We will be adding multiple lightning strikes to our solid layer, so I want each lightning to be a little bit simpler and less detailed. Open up the expert settings tab in the advanced lightning effect. Lower the complexity to 4. The lightning should now be a single streak with an occasional branch or two. Increase the turbulence to around 1.5 and the forking to around 60 or 70% to add just a few more branches into the effect. Go to the time position where you want your lightning effect to start, grab the left side of the solid layer and drag it to the current time indicator to trim down the layer. This will ensure that the lightning activates at the right moment when Jimmy unleashes his wrath onto me. Go to the advanced lightning effect and enable keyframing for the origin and direction by clicking on the little stopwatch icon next to the properties. Move the origin and direction markers to Jimmy's hand and my chest respectively. Move forward in time a few frames. You can move a single frame using the page up and page down keys. If you hold down shift you will jump 10 frames forward or backwards. Change the markers for the lightning to match Jimmy's hand at the position of my upper body. Continue animating the markers all the way throughout your composition. Don't worry if the lightning overlaps Jimmy's hands or my body, we will fix that up in a little bit. If you now scrub through your footage, the lightning should be positioned properly. To make the lightning effect look a little bit better, change the blend mode of the lightning solid to add. If you cannot see this column, simply click on the toggle switches and modes button at the very bottom of the screen. Nice, that looks pretty electric. Let's make this effect more awesome. Select the advanced lightning effect and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D on your keyboard. If you open up the properties on the solid layer, Note that there are now keyframes for both advanced lightning effects as they have been copied as well. Select the copy of the effect and change the start and end markers a little bit. We will add two lightning streaks to each hand so just move them around slightly on his right hand. You may notice that we can only see a single lightning effect. Where did the other one go? 
it gets overwritten by the second advanced lightning effect and the way to get it back is to tick the composite on original checkbox of the copied effect. That was easy. Now animate the second lightning start and end markers just like we did for the first lightning all the way through the composition. I will make this one strike from Jimmy's right hand to the other side of my chest. Make yet another copy of the advanced lightning effect. Make sure you duplicate the copy we already created as it is already set to composite on original. Otherwise, as before, all other lightning effects might vanish from the layer. Move the origin and direction markers to Jimmy's left hand and to my stomach. Because this lightning is a little bit closer to the camera and elements closer to the camera should appear larger, pop open the core settings and increase the core radius to 3. This will make this copy of the effect just a little bit thicker. And again, animate the start and end markers all the way through the composition. It might be a little bit easier if you delete all the existing keyframes so it doesn't constantly snap back to Jimmy's right hand. Create yet another copy of the advanced lightning effect and move it slightly so Jimmy ends up with two lightnings coming out of each hand and striking at different points on my upper body. Hide all the keyframe properties by clicking the little twisty on the solid layer and play back the effect. Looks pretty good so far, but we do not want the lightning to sit on top of Jimmy's hands or on my right arm. The lightning should sit behind those elements. For this we will use simple subtractive masks. Note that if you select the solid layer and try to apply a mask, nothing will happen because the lightning effect is generated after the masks are applied. To get around this issue we first need to pre-compose the solid layer. Right click on it and select pre-compose from the context menu. I will call this composition lightning comp. It is important that you select the move all attributes into the new composition option so the lightning effects get nested properly and we can apply masks to them. Then hit OK. The blend mode of the newly created composition will default to normal so set it back to add. We should now be back to where we started with the one key difference being that we can now apply masks to the lightning comp layer and it will apply to all of the lightning strikes as expected. Select the ellipse tool and draw a circle around Jimmy's right hand. You can use the shift and control keys to keep the mask perfectly circular and center it at the position where you clicked with your mouse. Set the mode for the mask to subtract to cut it out of the lightning comp layer and under the mask options increase the mask feather to around 50. Because we want the mask to follow along with Jimmy's right hand, also enable keyframes for the mask path property. Go to the time position where the lightning first shoots out of Jimmy's imperatorial hands and move the mask into position. You can double click on the edge of the mask to select its shape and move it. Just like with the lightning, move through your composition and match the position of the mask up with Jimmy's hands as it moves around. Return to the moment where I get toasted, select the mask and duplicate it using the same Ctrl D shortcut we used many times already in this tutorial. Move the copy of the mask to Jimmy's left hand and animate it to follow the hand for the duration of the composition. Back to the start, select the pen tool and draw a mask around my right arm. It doesn't have to be perfect, the effect is pretty quick anyways. Set the mask mode to subtract and increase the feathering to around 10. Animate the mask to follow my arm until I fall off the screen. If you play back your composition now, the lightning should appear to be coming out of Jimmy's hands and strike me in the chest, being properly obscured by my right arm. The last thing we need to do is add some nice lighting effects. For this, duplicate the base footage, you know the shortcut by now, and rename the copy to lighting. You can rename any layer by selecting it and pressing the enter key. Drag this lighting layer to the very top of your composition and change the blend mode to add. Wow, we've created some massively intense lighting. We will fix that up in a moment. For now, move to the time position where Jimmy lets out all of his imperatorial rage and trim the lighting layer down to start at the correct moment. Since the lighting would cast a rather bluish light, let's apply a tint effect to the layer. Change the map white to property to be a bright lightning like blue. That looks much better, even if it is still way too bright. Apply a large round mask around the main area where the lightning strikes are and increase the feathering to something large like 300. Animate the mask path to roughly follow the electricity shooting out of Jimmy's hands. Using the pen tool create another mask and outline the side of Jimmy that is facing the lightning effects as it will receive a lot of light. Again feather it out a little bit and animate the path to follow along with the footage. Finally let's make the lighting all jittery like what you'd expect from a large amount of electricity discharging. 
Reveal the opacity property of the lighting layer by selecting it and pressing T on your keyboard. Alt click on the stopwatch icon and in the expression editor enter wiggle open round bracket 10 comma 60 close round bracket and then click anywhere outside of the text field. This will cause the opacity property to fluctuate 10 times a second by up to 60. Finally, reduce the opacity value to something a bit more natural, something around 40. If you play back your composition now, you should have a really nice intense lightning hands effect that you can unleash onto any of your friends. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As you can see, I'm kind of in the middle of making a few stylistic changes to the way I do my tutorials. Hopefully they'll be easier to follow and well, just a little bit more fun to watch. As always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. If you want to show some support, please subscribe, like or share. It greatly helps out a lot with the channel and if you're hungry for more, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.